Well, this is a real treat to uh, spend a few moments with two of the greatest Braves of all time. Of course, the, the true home run king, Henry Aaron, who's with us in Atlanta, and Marquise Grissom as well, fellas. It's so great to see you. You look terrific. Uh, we don't get to spend uh, enough time together, but uh, as we say in the business, Happy New Year. You guys look fantastic. Well, thanks very much, Skip. It's very kind of you. Well, let's, let's get right to it. Um, it's the 100th anniversary of the Negro Leagues. And for younger fans, maybe even older fans, who don't understand the impact of that remarkable league and that unbelievable collection of talent. Mr. Aaron, you were obviously a, a member of the Negro Leagues quite briefly. Uh, tell me what it was like in the 1950s to be 18 years old and you're signed with the Indianapolis Clowns and your professional career began. Well, I, I thought I was in heaven, really, to be honest with you, when I played baseball with the, with the Indianapolis Clowns. Um, I made, um, not that it matters, it didn't make, make, make any difference. I made $200 a month, uh, I made $2 a day meal money, and I had a, 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 a gentleman that was sitting inside of me, and he and I used to put $2 a day together to put into, a, to, to get a meal every day, and we buy a large jar of peanut butter, large, large jar of peanut butter, and today, I, I, I would say that I, I despise peanut butter right now. How influential was that, albeit brief experience in the Negro Leagues, for you as you began your professional career? Well, I think I learned an, an awful lot in, in those six months. Uh, I, I don't know that um, I would have learned any other way to play baseball other than going to the Negro League. Uh, I had played. I played with some some players that uh, had, had, had experience of playing in the Negro League for a long time, and they knew how to play the game. And they taught me a little bit about how to play the game. And I kind of listened. I was only 19 years old. I kind of listened to what they said and uh, try to take uh, and heed what they said and, and try to play the game the way that they said that it should be played. Marquise is a kid who grew up in Atlanta, and obviously you had to idolize Henry Aaron and all the wonderful things he did, not just on the baseball field, in the community as well. Were you aware of the Negro Leagues and the impact on our sport, and was that something that was influential to you as you became a, a college baseball player and then later a professional player yourself? Well, well Chip, I, I really wasn't educated on the Negro Leagues coming up. Um, my dad was 97 years old when he passed, so I, I knew a lot about – Hank Aaron, Dusty Baker, but not a lot about the Negro Leagues. And um, Hank was that example for me as a kid coming up who my dad talked about, everybody in our neighborhood talked about. So for me as a baseball player, when I first started playing baseball, I wanted to be like Hank. You know, didn't know Hank, never seen Hank play, but I just wanted to be like Hank. And, um, you know, when I got that opportunity to meet him, um, he probably don't remember this, but it was – in uh, 1987, when Larry Aaron brought us from Florida a and up to, to, to meet Hank. We're on our way to North Carolina A&T, and uh, mm -hmm. he dropped us off by Hank House, and we went in, everybody met Hank, and we went on up to A&T and played baseball. So I don't know if Hank <laughs> remember that, but well, I was thrilled to death, and I would never forget that. <laughs> if I did my math right, Marquise, you would have been about – seven years old when Henry Aaron broke Babe Ruth's record. Did you watch that on TV? I don't remember, Chip. I don't think so. I just remember in, uh, <laughs> the city of Atlanta going crazy. And at that point, I really wasn't a baseball player. I was more of a football player, and I ran track at that age. And, um, you know, I played all sports. So I just, I just wanted to do anything I could to stay out of trouble at that age. <laughs> That's good advice. Um, Mr. Aaron, uh, so much of the Negro League's legacy was tied up in the players who could not break through baseball's color barrier. Jackie Robinson obviously did that. I believe you've, you've been quoted as saying that Jackie Robinson was one of, if not your favorite player. Besides the obvious, why was that the case for you with regards to Jackie Robinson? Jackie came through some serious time. Uh, he, had, he had some tough time. Um, and yet, as tough a times as Jackie had, uh, I think that some of the times that I had was even tougher. You know, I had some tough times too. I, I was not allowed to open mail for 
a month. Uh, I was not allowed to stay with my teammates for a month. Uh, I had to stay in a separate hotel. I had to stay in a separate. Uh, it, it was. It was. Uh, it was just me and me alone. Uh, you know. Uh, I, so uh, I remember all those things, and and it and it's. You know, I I don't talk about them much, and the reason I don't talk about them much is because they don't bring back good memories. You know, really, I, I don't I don't I don't have good memories thinking about that. I, I thought about something a few years ago when Pete Rose was going after the base hit record, and I said, you know, he had the glorious time of anybody that I ever seen going after that record. I said, I wish that I had had that kind of time. <laughs> I just didn't have that kind of time. I, I it, it just everywhere I went, uh, I was a mock man. That's incredibly sad to think about it in that regard. But I would guess, Mr. Aaron, it's awfully rewarding to know that as time has passed, people have allowed you that joy because they revel in that record, much like Mars Keys and all mm-hmm. the people in Atlanta who have idolized you again, not just for what you did, but what you did go through, what you persevered through and what you have meant to this community. Is is that in any way able to make up for what you missed in the moment itself at Fulton County Stadium? Yes, yes, I, 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 I agree with you, everything that you said. Uh, you know, I, I am well respected, uh, not only from the home run record, but just respected as a baseball player, you know, and, uh, and I, I feel quite delighted about that. You know, really, I, I, I see great baseball players. You know, you know I, I, think about, I think about all of the things that I would have done or could have done if I had had the opportunity to, to do them. I, I, think about, I think about what Marquise is doing now for all these kids. You know, Marquise thanks again he is a man who does some great things, not only for for black players, but he does them for everybody. And I am very thankful for that, Marquise. Thank you so very much. And he's been very helpful. Yeah, Marquise, let's talk about that. The Marquise Grissom Baseball Academy has done so much for kids in Atlanta who love this game and don't have and haven't had the opportunities to participate in our great sport. What have you been able to do in these last couple of months, and what are your plans going forward? Well, we just we've been limited, uh, Chip, to what we could do on the field, and uh, so we had to keep our numbers down and uh, gravitate to the kids who I think needed the most. The tenth and eleventh grade, the two thousand twenty ones and twenty twos, give them that opportunity to get back out on the field at whatever c- capacity of kids that we could uh, have out on the field. And but it's been tough, and uh, we were able to do that. To, to, to give those kids to, uh, the, the development part of the game, that's what's so much needed uh, bad in our community. But these kids um, would, would, uh, would have never got the opportunity to get out and play on the baseball field if they didn't have the, the equipment and have the resources and the coaches to, to, to get to that next level. And it's all about giving the kids an opportunity and to develop the kids in our community because that's what I seen Hank do. He, not only was he a great baseball player, but a great man, a great leader in our community. And uh, he kind of led the way. So I had a platform uh, uh, to, to lean on, not just the baseball platform, but an icon in our community who already had paved the way for me and made it a little bit easier for me to go out and, and try to cultivate the community. And so Marquise, these kids that play in your academy maybe are able to graduate and be seen as part of the Hank Aaron Invitational with the 44 great kids who played at Truist Park last year. Unfortunately, Mr. Aaron, that's not going to happen this season. Have you been able to get in touch with those kids and talk to them and uh, give them some hope and some feeling that, hey, keep your uh, chin up, keep fighting, baseball's going to be back, and maybe some of these kids will be back in 2021 for the Hank Aaron Invitational? Chip, I hope so. I, 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 wish, I, could, I wish I had a, a method or some, something that I could tell them uh, because, you know, um, it, it's going to be back. There's no question about it. Uh, when, I don't know when, but it's going to be back. Uh, I just hate to see so many good-looking young kids that not only the Braves have here in this city, but all over the league uh, that is worthy of playing baseball. And I just hate to see talent just waste. I just hate to see a talent waste. I, I, I just hope that 
that we'll come along some way and say, hey, we can play this game once again the way it, it was played before. There is improving African-American participation in Major League Baseball. Improving. I think we all agree it is not where any of us want to see. There are so many talented kids that have gravitated to other sports other than baseball. Marquise, I'll start with you. Are you seeing any kind of a sea change in the African-American community as far as accessibility to our game and what's, what's happened in our society in 2021? Has that opened some eyes, not just in the baseball world, but the regular world as well, that we can perhaps have a marriage and a meeting of the minds that this is a great opportunity for kids who are athletically inclined to really uh, become people like you and people like Hank Aaron by playing baseball and not football or basketball or other sports? Well, Chip, I can only speak um... – I want to speak highly of here in Atlanta, in Georgia, in the state of Georgia. We have tons of African-American kids playing baseball. I think what I've experienced over the last uh, 15 years is them getting the proper instructions and getting the proper guidance, you know, to, to graduate from high school and hopefully get that scholarship to, to go to college and play baseball. We got to be a good student athlete first because there's so many other jobs in the game of baseball, not just playing on the field. And uh, they need to know that. They need to recognize that because every kid is not going to be a big league ball player. But mm -hmm. what we can do, make that kid as accessible to be a professional as best he can once he graduates from high school and go on to college. That is so true, Marquis. You know, I think there is more baseball players in the state of Georgia than I know of anywhere. There used to be a time when you're talking about the state and, the, and how many players, then you start talking about Mobile, Alabama. You had so many ball players. But now I think that this city here, this city here has more ball players. Uh, every time I look around, it's somebody coming from Georgia playing baseball. And, and these kids know how to play baseball. Somebody's teaching them how to play. <laughs> Makes me kind of mad that they're not all playing for the Braves. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard a story, Mr. Aaron, and I want to take you back to the 1950s. After you had uh, been with the Negro Leagues for six months, you had a chance to sign with either the Braves or the New York Giants. You obviously signed with the Braves. As you look back on your career, did you ever think about how differently your life might have been had you been able to sign with the Giants and play alongside Willie Mays? Well, you know, I, in some ways, I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't do it. I'm, I'm kind of glad that I signed with the Braves. Uh, and the reason for that is, is simply because of $200. That's the matter of why I didn't sign with the, the Giants or the Braves. The Giants offered me less than $200, and the Braves offered me $200. And I decided I would go with the Braves simply because the Braves had less talent, and they needed ball players, and I went with them, and I am so grateful that I did do that. I got to tell you, Marquise, I got goosebumps when he tells that story. I don't know about you, but think about how <laughs> different baseball would have been over two hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, and and I don't, and I, and I'm very grateful for that. You know, I, I, I have no. I don't have any any qualms about whether you know I made money playing baseball. I love I love, and when I say loved, I love baseball. I love baseball. I, I don't go to many games here, but I see every game that I can see. I watch every game on television, and I look at every game that you and your partners. Televised. I watch every game, and I am always, I am critical to myself, <laughs> not you, critical of myself, <laughs> of what has happened. <laughs> Any critique you want to give me, I'm happy to take. <laughs> Put you on the spot, Mr. Aaron. Was Marquise Grissom your favorite brave center fielder of all time? You, you know, I was, I was happy. <laughs> I remember, I remember, I think they, Marky, correct me if I'm wrong. I think they traded for you in spring training. Is that right? They did. Yeah, okay. I, I I thought they traded for you, and 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 two or three players came to me, uh, not players, but one of the owners came to me and said, 
You know, we got a chance to get Marquise Grissom. I said, you got to be kidding me. Got a chance to get Marquise Grissom? See, yes. I said, well, if you got a chance to get Marquise Grissom, get it right now. <laughs> I said, he is the best center fielder in baseball. And I am so grateful, Marquise. I am so grateful that you spent all the time that you did over here in this city playing baseball because you was you 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 were one of you and still is one of the greatest not only baseball but otherwise otherwise now chip you talking about goosebumps no those are goosebumps right there <laughs> but 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 hank but hank has no idea the impact that he had on me as a player um um, I had a run in with Hank probably my third year in the major league when I was still with the Montreal Expos. And um, I kind of went back to Montreal thinking about how far and what he experienced during his playing days and how it just lit a fire up under my butt and made me say, hey, do not expect nothing less of yourself but greatness. And I kind of tuned in at that point, you know, my third year in the big leagues and I became an all-star that year in 1993. In '94, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. you I said it perfectly. You need help along the way. Nobody gets to the big leagues by themselves. Nobody That's can true. play 10, 15 years by themselves. You need a lot of support. You need a lot of love. You need a lot of um, good luck too. And you got to have a lot of people That's in your good. corner. And, and unfortunately, the Braves was in my corner the two years I was there, and it was an unbelievable experience to be back at home playing for the Braves. That is so true, Marquis. You said you said a mouthful, and the quicker players understand that, that although I played 23 years, and out of the 23 years that I played, I bet you out of those 15, 16 years that I played, I had somebody hidden behind me, in front of me, protecting me, or doing something. And that's the same thing with everything, you know. You have to have somebody helping you. And you are absolutely right. As great as your careers were for both of you, and they were great careers, what sense of fulfillment do you feel by paying the game forward? As you said, this willingness and this desire and this need to help younger players understand the game, to play the game, and know that you have people in front of you and behind you. There has to be a remarkable sense of fulfillment in seeing that uh, young skull full of mush, as it will, absorb that and, and carry it forward. Well, I, I almost feel obligated because uh, I'm going to go back, uh, Chip, to Florida a &M University where I had Larry Aaron as my outfield coach. I had Robert Lucas, brother of Bill Lucas, um, as my head coach, which I think was the smartest baseball man I've ever been around, Robert Tyrone Lucas. And he showed me and he gave me information that, that pushed me to a whole nother level. So once I got to the major leagues, I didn't understand it in college, but when I got to the major leagues, I understood exactly what he was talking about. And at, at that point, I already knew that when I finished playing this game, I wanted to go back and give any and every kid an opportunity to learn the game. And I was all for coming back, serving the community, because that's what I seen in the community with Robert Lucas. That's what I seen in the movie with Ambassador Young. That's what I seen in the community from Hank Aaron. And that's what I seen in the community with Joseph E. Lowry, all the people that served this great city of Atlanta and that was in the community, it's almost, it's almost a sense of, um, a great sense of pride for me to really go back and help as many kids as I could. And for you, Mr. Aaron, a kid born in Mobile, Alabama, who began playing baseball at the age of 18 and has had this wonderful career, could you ever imagine uh, when you got on that train the first time with your sister's shoes that you <laughs> like turned out the way that it had, and you would have become not just a baseball icon, but such a remarkable ambassador for humanity. Was that ever anything that you could have even imagined as a youngster? I, I don't know that I dreamed about it, really. I, I dreamed about it. I, I thought about it. And I, and I tell you this, I, I don't know how much time we got. I used to, I had an uncle, my older uncle, and he used to make me stroke his hair so many times in order for him to throw 15 baseballs to me, catch 15 baseballs. But, and I, and, and I thought it was, a, I thought it was a joke, you know, really, but, I, but 
the game of baseball, it was more of a job. When I say a job, I mean, it was a job. But the, the one thing that I remember out of all the years that I played the game, the one thing that I regret that I didn't do in my whole 23 years was winning the Triple Crown. And I think I came very close three times. And I didn't win it three, I, I should have won it three times. That is the only thing that I think that I regret. Other than that, um, my career was fulfilled. I, I had a nice time. I, I met some nice people. And baseball is a, is a, is a great game. It's a, it's a great game. And I imagine football and all the rest of it is a great game. But I, I love baseball. We all love baseball and we love both of you. And we are so grateful to the both of you for what you are and who you are and what you've meant to our great game. Uh, the last question I have for both of you is this, uh, no one knows what the future holds, but I'll start with you, Marquise. Uh, will Marquise Grissom be the next Henry Aaron as far as the Atlanta Braves and the sport of baseball and being an Atlanta kid and an ambassador for our great city and our great franchise? Is that something you would like to take a, uh, the torch from someday and, and carry it forward? I would love to and be honored to because, um, you know, what this guy endured during his playing days and coming from the Negro Leagues, um, I have no choice but to keep it going. And, and, I, and I think that's my goal and that's my mission in life is to, to, to what the great game of baseball has done for us financially to be able to help and, and serve the community and, um, I, I feel again obligated to go back and do much as I can for the game, and uh, and if if that's it for the Braves, I would love to be that guy. And if not, I'm still gonna be doing what I'm doing. That's reaching out to helping the many kids that I can help in this community, and um, not trying to create a major league baseball player, but get them to graduate from high school and go to college. And I think that was my ultimate plan. And look what happened if I kept being persistent in what I wanted to do. And I pursued right. my career. And uh, I'm like Hank. I'm I'm happy. I did everything I wanted to do in the game. I did not take a day off in 17 years. And mm. that's what I'm most proud of. You know, I might have not been the best player, but I didn't take not one day off in baseball. I came okay. there to win the baseball game every day. You came to play? Every day. Every day. That's good, Marquis. That's great. And you, you did a, a, a remarkable good job. Well, thank you, Hank. Job. <laughs> thank you, Hank. Hey. I learned from the best. <laughs> yeah, did a good job. Did a good job. Did a good job. And 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 you and you've helped a lot of kids. Well, thank you, Hank. And so my last question for you, Mr. Aaron. What gives you more pride? 755 homers or the legacy and impact that you have left not just on the Braves, Major League Baseball, our nation, but the world? I don't know. You know. Hitting, hitting the home runs was, 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 I wouldn't say easy. It, it, was, it, was, a, it was a job, but uh, I would say that, um, uh, I, I don't know, I, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose playing the game itself was, 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 was a tough, was a tough game. I took every single game Every single game, I'm like Marquise. I never was on the disabled list. Uh, I played some time with, 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 with a little sprained ankle, broken ankle, a little, little ankle, but, uh, but I, I got by. You did more than get by, and uh, <laughs> the person who loves baseball owes you and Marquise Grissom a debt of gratitude I'm not sure will ever be to repay. Uh, I love you both and I appreciate you both. And thank you so much for spending some time with us today.